leading us towards our session with Jim Lauderdale live in Studio B. Welcome back to Spindale, Jim. Thanks. It's great to be home. It's great to be on campus again, too. Yeah, you've always got a home here in Spindale, Jim. You know that. Well, thank you. And, you know, literally, this Studio B, a few years back when I was going through some rough time and in in between places, that I don't think they can see on camera, but there's a Sierra Nevada kind of sheet over (laughs) it, long table, that's where I slept many nights. You guys didn't realize that, but I'd sneak in here, and uh, it was warm enough. And uh, then out by the big pond out in front of Isothermal College, in the middle of the night, I'd go out there and be freezing, but I'd collect all the duck feathers, and I would sew them in to the jacket I had and make made a winter jacket out of it and it would double up as a pillow underneath there. That's amazing. That There's, might be too much information. That's just heartwarming. Just another way that WNCW gives back. That's right. So <laughs> thank you guys. Jim Lauderdale is live in Studio B on WNCW where live sessions are made possible by Sierra Nevada Brewing Company. Hey. How convenient. Yeah. Yeah. Jim Lauderdale, who's playing tomorrow night at 185 King Street in Brevard, Wednesday night at the Great Eagle in Asheville That's right. with Travis Book's Happy Hour, yeah, and Friday in Charlotte, then Sunday in Knoxville. You're just bopping all around our just region, bopping around just like uh, Gene Vincent and the Blue Caps, just <laughs> be bop a lula ing around. We're looking forward to hearing what you've got to play for us today. What would you like to start with? You know, I would too, Joe, and I'm sorry I've been talking so much. We're out of time. I'm sorry, but uh, I'd love to rebook something and come back. <laughs> right. But, uh, <clears throat> well, I'll tell you what. I will do something off of this new, uh, new-ish new-est CD. Vinyl, I would say album. I do say album, but the vinyl will be out in a few months, hopefully. And uh, but um, <clears throat> it's a country album. I've gone back to the traditional country sound on this, and uh, uh, the album's called Game Changer. And this one uh, has a heavy pedal steel guitar and uh, Telecaster guitar kind of riff that I'll sing some during this. But this one's called That Kind of Life. That kind of day. When a baby tastes a little bit of sunshine, kicks their legs and bounces up and down, grins and laughs and everything is so fine. We want to keep them that way for a while They all grow up and everything is different The way that history comes into play I hope their hopes will come through while they're growing And they'll have that kind of life, that kind of day Go through all you must do and know that while you're getting where you're going go through don't go away and have that kind of life that kind of day Guitars just waiting there, ripe for the picking. Sitting lonely, waiting to be played. You get to make the music that you're hearing. To hear it all will carry you away. Someday, when finally things are back to normal. But what is normal these days, you might say? I hope their hopes will come through while you're waiting And you'll have that kind of life, that kind of day Go 
through all you must do and know that while you're getting where you're going go through don't go away and have that kind of life that kind of day I guess everybody wants that kind of feeling For things to go a little more their way I hope your hopes will come through while you're waiting And you'll have that kind of life, that kind of day Go through all you must do And know that while you're getting where you're going Go through, don't go away And have that kind of life, that kind of day And have that kind of life, that kind of day Live on WNCW, it's Jim Lauderdale playing the lead-off tune from Game Changer. Very nice. Thank you. Thanks for having me today, and it's, it was great to see y'all. Thank you. <laughs> you want to do it? You know, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, uh, a little chit-chat. Maybe we can have a couple more songs, maybe, perhaps? I... Okay. We can have our intern go out and get the, the goose feathers. No, I'm kidding. You know, I... I am very glad to be here today. Whatever, let's let's t- yeah, let's talk. So, game changer. It's getting hard to count that high, but I think it's your thirty fourth collection, your thirty fourth album, thirty fifth, thirty fifth, thirty fifth. Okay. And but hey, who's counting? Who's counting? But really, that's a, that's an amazing achievement. What makes this record special for you? Um, <clears throat> I had started this record before like in 2018, and I wanted to put it out in 2021 or whatever was, and then I decided to do the Hope record during the pandemic because I wanted just, you know, I didn't want to, I felt funny about putting out a, you know, record, even though this record has some hopeful songs on it, but, you know, it was just such a strange time I wanted to put hope out then, so I, I wrote some new things for this record and for Game Changer and went back in the studio a few times, so I kind of made it, uh, you know, added to it, and I've got another record I'm, I may put out in February, kind of a continuation of Game Changer, and I'm going to call it Game will change to kind of follow through on that theme. <laughs> you worked with Jay Weaver, who's yes. your producer and your bass player again. Yeah. How did that come about? You've worked with him a number of times. I have. J- Jay has been playing bass with me on and off for, gosh, I guess 15 or so years. And uh, about seven years ago now, I guess, we started going into – Blackbird Studios in Nashville. They've got a school there called the Blackbird Academy. And I had some uh, great deal on some studio time. So we just, I took the road band in and we just started, you know, seeing what came out. And, uh, and I asked Jay, I realized he had so many great ideas I said, why don't you, would you co-produce this record with me? Because you you are adding so much. So he did. And I'm so glad because these records, I guess the last four or so we've done together, um, they wouldn't have been anywhere near as good without Jay. He, he is so, he's just great. So I'm very, very lucky be working with them and all the terrific players on the record too so jay plays bass bass throughout and he gets credit for bass but also tic-tac bass that's and right i like that and so could you take us back and explain a little bit about the tic-tac bass and its role in country music yes yeah that's a great question um tic-tac is like a uh kind of like a 
it's a well, you can do different things. Like you, you could just play an electric bass with a pick, but it's kind of got that, uh, like a. It's got that, and you do it along with a bass line, and it's it kind of adds this real cool texture that you've heard on tons of classic country songs. And uh, so, yeah, we, we uh, I, I wanted on this record and also an answer to your question when you said what makes this record different or special, it is challenging for me whenever there's some kind of a stylistic record in particular, like say for instance, if the records I did with Ralph Stanley, you know, those were within a certain style, Ralph's style. And with this record, with, with some other traditional country records I've done, I want to try to write within that traditional sound, but not, you know, be too derivative or something. You know, to try to come up with something new as if, Though, for instance, if it's, as if I was making these records in the 60s or early 70s, but it was new material. You know, you know what I mean? Sure, sure. Now, when you go into the studio, I guess Jay was pretty helpful with uh, everything coming together because from what I remember, the, everything is not all congealed. It's not all set going into the sessions, and a lot of that comes out fairly different or there's a little bit of writing on the fly. Is oh, that gosh. right? Oh, gosh. Yes. Un unfortunately, Joe, that's kind of my... It just seems to always happen uh, no matter how long I try to prepare for a session. So many things... Life gets in the way and um, a lot of times... I won't write something till the day before or the, the morning of or during a meal break or as the guys are sitting there. Um, not always. And, and when I've co-written the songs that make it on a record, those are done in advance. Uh, but that's just part of the nerve-wracking process sometimes. Yeah, sometimes a deadline is really what you need to be inspired to do I, it. Unfortunately, I do. I'm one of those kinds of people that needs the deadline to finish something. That's great. Jim Lauderdale live in Studio B. Many appearances throughout the region this week going into next week. 